Hello, this is the chapter 22 of the second edition of the Top Hat textbook. In this chapter, we're going to be going over the carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, similar to the aldehydes and ketones, we're going to be reacting at the um, C double bond O for this, but there's going to be slit, um, the, we're going to be making different products. Okay, these are the, the types of products we're going to um, making because the C double bond O, after it moves up, to make the uh, O minus, it can collapse back down to reform the carbonyl. Okay, and so this is the general mechanism, right? So, so remember with with these, right, you're going to be. Right, there's a nice big polar covalent bond here. Okay, so that your nucleophile is going to um, going to attack at the carbon. Right, carbon can't have four bonds, so it's going to push the the electrons up onto this oxygen. Now here. Um, this is where it diverges from the aldehyde and ketone because this, um, the lone pair on the oxygen can come and collapse back down because it's, um, it doesn't have um, only carbon-carbon or carbon-hydrogen bonds. You're going to have a, a good leaving group here. And so this can, um, this can go away with the leaving group. And in doing so, when the leaving group leaves, if there's a, um, say, a hydrogen on the, uh, on the nucleophile, it's going to take that electron as a souvenir, okay? And you're going to replace whatever that leaving group was with your nucleophile. Okay. So this is sort of a classic example. So come in here. You've got a water molecule. That's going to be your nucleophile. Right, so remember that you have a partial positive, partial negative. Right. This is going to attack here. It's going to push up to, move, to form what's called the tetrahedral intermediate. This will then collapse back down and then kick this away to form... Well, let's show the tetrahedral intermediate here. So you've got this. And now if you calculate it, uh, the formal charge, this oxygen has the formal charge on it. With that, uh, negative. So now this is going to collapse back down and then kick this away. Now it could it could kick the uh, the water away, but that would just go back to the structure, so it doesn't do you much good. Um, and so as this is leaving, this is going to grab a hydrogen here. It's going to grab that hydrogen as a souvenir and you're going to be left with this. And there's your product. In this case, it's saying a water molecule, a different water molecule can come in and grab the, the, the hydrogen here. Um, you could also say the Cl minus is going to come in here. Um, it doesn't really matter. Something's going to come in and grab grab the hydrogen. Now, again, just as a reminder for the aldehydes and ketones, or um, like we've seen before. If you have a, a um, with, remember with um, with aldehydes and ketones, you don't have a, a good leaving group on here. So if you have an aldehyde here, you're going to either have to break, if this were to collapse back down, you would uh, either have to break a carbon-carbon bond or a carbon-hydrogen. With a um, with a ketone, you're going to have to break carbon-carbon bonds. Like that. And so what ends up happening is you would be left with the alcohol. So this can't collapse down if you have the aldehyde and ketone, but it can with things like an ester and acid chloride and whatnot. Okay. Now this is a chart you're going to want to know. Okay. The uh, um, acid chloride and hydride, thioester, ester, and amide. Okay. So as, as it turns out, for the reactions, okay, 
when you go from starting material to product, you can either stay in the same row or you can go, um, you can go down. You cannot go back up. Okay, so you can go from an um, anhydride to a thioester, okay? but you can't go from an, um, an anhydride up to a, a um, acid chloride. Okay? Now for here, right, so you can go from a thioester to an ester, okay? but you can't go from an ester back up to a thioester for this mechanism. Now I should point out that a carboxylic acid is, is at a similar level as, as the ester. Right, so you can go from ester to carboxylic acid fairly uh, in a very straightforward manner. Okay. So you can go down, you can go across, right? You can swap from one type of ester to another, or from a carbox, you know, from one type of thioester to another, um, but you can't go up. So these are the different types of reactions that we can do. So Right. Here's our C double bond O. We've got a good leaving group here. Okay. And so the general reaction would be right. this coming here, come up to make the, the um, tetrahedral intermediate, then that collapses down and then kicks away the, the chloride. As it's leaving, it's going to grab one of, these, one of these hydrogens along the way as a souvenir. And so you end up making this product. So all of these work. And so for here, right, we're going from right, the acid chloride to the amide. And that's permissible by our list, right? Acid chloride's at the very top, amide's at the very bottom, so we're good. And this is just the, the overall mechanism for it. Now for here, again, all right, here's our C double bond O, it's a thioester, yeah. and so what you're going to be doing, right, so here's our nucleophile, here, up, down, kick away, and that's going to grab the hydrogen as it's, as it's leaving, and so you're going to be left with this. come back over here and say you take a look at this right so this is the this is the thioester right this is just a regular ester so that's going down our list so we're fine on that so for here right, right so here's our C double bond O here's our good leaving group right so this must be our nucleophile so again we're going to be going here up, collapse back down, kick away. And so we're going to end up with this. So, right? And as this group leaves, it's going to snag a hydrogen from, um, from the nucleophile. It's going to snag it as a, as a souvenir. Right? So you're going to, oop. So NH2, H, O, like that. Now, again, we're going to be going from, right, this is an ester, this is an amide, right, so that's fine. Now, for an anhydride, okay, so, with that, so it doesn't necessarily matter uh, which side you choose. It, um, for a symmetrical, um, especially for a symmetrical one, with a, um, I'm not going to give it to you, but if it was asymmetrical, so you know this side versus this side, it's going to want to attack on the the side with the smaller, um, the least sterically hindered side. So if this was just say a methyl group versus the cyclopropyl, this would attack at the um, at the side with the methyl because it'd just be easier to get to. But for asymmetrical ones, or for symmetrical ones, excuse me. 
where these groups here that are hanging off the anhydride are the same, then it doesn't matter you know, which side you, you go. And just out of tradition, right? So I usually hit the one on the on the left, but again, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna here, up, down, and kick away. And so remember, this is this is the bond you you break. So this whole thing is gonna be going away. As it's gonna go away, it's gonna grab the hydrogen from the nucleophile. So this is no different than any other reaction we've done. So one, two, three, four. Okay. And you're going from a right, this is an anhydride to the thioester. And so you're good to go. So for here, yep. yep. And for this one, All right. so again, you've got the C double bond O. Here's your leaving group. All right. So for this, right, you come up, down, kick away, and that would grab a hydrogen as as it's leaving. So you go this way. So we're look at this, right? So this is an amide. And this is an ester. Aha! We're going up the list, because remember, um, remember the list goes acid chloride. Right? And hydride. Thioester. Ester and amide. Okay, and so you'd be going up the list. Okay, so that means that this reaction isn't going to occur. No reaction. In fact, the reaction really wants to go uh, in the opposite direction, right? So it wants to go from an ester to an anode. The reason why this chart is, is the way it is, okay, is because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going to the, um, we're going to be going from a, strong nucleophile to a, a weak nucleophile. Remember, because remember way back when we were um, in the acid base um, chapter, back in organic one, when we were predicting um, which type of, um, how the reaction would go, we would go from the strong base side to the, to the weak base side, okay, or the, um, what is it, right, the hype, um, we'd be going from the Right? Or to the, you could look at it, you know, at the pKa's, we're going up in the pKa. Okay. Think about what, what's getting released here. Okay, so for an acid chloride, the le what gets kicked away is a Cl minus. Here, it's going to be a, you know, some sort of carb carboxylate. Here, it's going to be, you know, a sulfur thiolate. Okay. Here it's an, you know, some sort of, um, you know, ethoxide methoxy, like that, some sort of hydroxide type, and then here it's going to be an N minus. Okay. If you notice, what's going to happen is, right, the pKa for the Cl minus is, right, pKa is like, I don't know, it's like negative six. Here it's like five. Here it's like 10, something like that. This is 14, and this is a lot, right? So this is like, I don't know, like 30 or something like that. That's why, that's why this list is the way it is, okay? Is because you're going to be attacking with a strong nucleophile, which is a strong base. 
and you're going to be kicking away a weak base. Okay, and by going uh, by going in this order, right, you're going to be um, right, we've um, you're going to be kicking away an increasingly uh, weaker base. Okay, and so that's that's why the order is the way it is. But to figure this out, right, for if if a reaction is, is you know, if there's no reaction, it's it's go ahead, it's easier to just go ahead and draw what the product would be and then figure it out from anna to ester. Oh, that's the wrong way, so it must not be um, you know, it must be no reaction. It's easier to do that than to try to predict it without drawing anything out. Some people could do it, some people can't, but this it takes hardly any time to, to draw the reaction product, so um, it's easier to just do it that way. Now, here's the question. If acid chlorides are the, at the very top of that list, how do we, um, how do we get, um, get them, right? There's, there's not an acid chloride mine, you know, in the middle of Montana or something like that, that we can um, mine these out of the ground, right? So for that, we have to be able to make them. And the way that we do that is we sort of short circuit it with a compound called thionyl chloride, which is SOCO, SOCl2. Its sole purpose in life is to convert OHs into CLs. Okay, whether they're carboxylic acids or alcohols, they're going to get converted into CLs. Okay, and so that's typically why they're called acid chlorides, is because they're produced from the acids. Okay, so you mix it with thionyl chloride and you end up with the CL there. Now, another quirk for this is the reaction of carboxylic acids um, and amines. Okay? In theory, this reaction should go without, without a hitch. Okay? You're going from carboxylic acid, which is the same level as the ester. You're, you're going to be making the amide, which is the very bottom. It should be, um, shouldn't be a problem. The hitch comes with the, the fact that you've got an acid. And remember, amines are, a, um, are basic. So the easier reaction to do is to actually come in and just do a nice little acid-base reaction and you end up with this, these products here. If you want to actually do a coupling, you have to sort of trick the reaction into going a, a slightly different way by adding a compound called DCC. So the, um, let me see if I can show you what this compound is, Dicyclo, um, dicyclo um, carbonamide, like that. So, what this does okay, is it actually converts this carboxylic acid, reacts with the DCC to form an ester, okay, and then it's this amide that comes in and will then um, can do the re, you know the, the nucleophilic attack. So the ester remove you know so, so we're going to re actually remove that um, the acidic hydrogen from the carboxylic acid replace that with a carbon group to make a reactive ester that the amide can come and react with. Okay. If you want to see the mechanism, it's, it's right here. Right? So the carboxylic acid comes in, attacks, up, and then the amine will come in here. Now the nice thing is, after this gets kicked away, it, it cycleizes to form um, dicyclohexylurea, um, and this is, um, the, uh, this is unreactive. Then the other nice thing is that this is these things are typically done in, in chlorinated solvents, so chloroform or dichloromethane, and this is insoluble um, in dichloromethane. So you can just filter it off, and then you'll have your your product. So it's a, it's a really nice reaction. So okay, so we have carboxylic acid, we have an amine. Aha, we have our DCC. Okay, and so. Essentially, what, what's going to happen is you're going to right, up, down, kick away, and then the OH is going to snag a, a hydrogen. This is sort of an approximate, but it's, you know, you can think about it with the presence of the DCC, you can think about that that's what's going to happen along the way. Um, it's going to react like every other um, carboxylic acid derivative reaction. And so you're going to end up with. Like that and then plus DCU if you want to be technical it's plus DCU the dicyclohexylurea right? and you
and going from the carboxylic acid because you're looking at what's getting attacked. So this is the carboxylic acid, which is the same height as the ester. And you go into an, an amide, which is fine. Now for organometallics, okay. So remember, we can these um, act as car, um, carban stabilized carbanions. So they can come in and attack C double ones out. We, we talked about this in the previous chapter. Okay. However, you do have to be careful with these um, when you're acting, um, reacting with the um, at these carboxylic acid derivatives, right? Because what's going to happen is. If you have something like methyl Grignard, remember the, the this carbon wherever that wherever this is attached, the, the magnesium is attached, that's going to act like a carbon ion, and so this is going to come in and attack up, down, kick away, and so what you're going to end up getting is you're going to end up getting this. CH3 minus. But you're going to get this. Now, the thing is, as long as you've got, you know, if you've got an excess of these, right, if you had just one molecule of this and one molecule of this, it would stop here. But if you have a second one, a second methyl Grignard in here, or any other nucleophile like this, right, this thing can attack again. And so what you're going to end up with is this. Right. Which can then which then gets um, protonated during the workup, right? Because you end up just dumping in some water and that ends up grabbing that and so you end up with this. It's a really bad benzene, sorry. So if you have an excess of the methyl Grignard, right, this reaction can happen a second time to form the, in this case, tertiary alcohol. So you have to be careful. The same would happen if you had a hydride. Okay, if you had lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride, it's going to come in here, and instead of having the methyl groups, you're going to have hydri hydrides that come in here, up, down, kick away, so you'd end up with the, the H here, which, and then another hydride can come in and attack. Kick this up to make this. Just imagine those are H's, and then you would end up with, during the workup, the O- minus would become OH, so you'd end up with the primary alcohol. So you just have to be careful with that. So here's the here's the mechanism if you're interested. Okay. Now for polymers, okay, so we can have polyamides and polyesters, okay, like that. So, and you can do this by having a um, different types of, of amides and esters, okay, right. So, so if you have the, the acid chloride, right, again, you're going to have this up down kick away and so what you can do is you can grow these from either side now you can do it from the acid chloride here you can if you have the alcohol right you're going to end up with the um, ester linkages here usually you just do this in, under high heat and you can drive off the water okay? um, that that gets formed okay so with that but these polyamides are, are type are typically called nylons okay and then you talk about the different polyesters um, and so you can look at, you know, nylon 6-6, six, six, um, mylar, um, some of that polycarbonates here, some of that spandex uses these two different, um, these two different polymers, or, you know, these, these two different um, compounds to come together, um, 
to make this, right? So um, nylon six is actually um, it actually reacts with itself because this um, if you split this apart here, you're going to have a um, you can have an OH on this side and an extra H here if you put a water across it, and then they can react together. And so typically what you do is you end up coming in here, and, and if you look at these numbers, um, the first one is going to be the, um, the piece with the um, how many carbons are in the, um, the diamine piece, and then the, the second number is the one that's in the diacid piece. Like that and so you can tune this right so you can mix a, a four and a six or a six and a four or, or a three and an eight or whatever and depending on how long these um, different different groups are you can get different um, properties within the um, uh, within the polymer how flexible it is how moldable it is how um, resilient it is or how brittle um, you know how much it, you know how high can you get before it melts things like that so and we do this for a lot of different things right so but that's so there's the the, the belts that are in your top you know in the, in the car tires or mylar balloons or or as you can see you know very fashionable pieces right so but that's so for um, different types of um, you know synthetic fabrics with these Okay. Now, one of the big things, and this has been going over the last, um, you know, last couple of decades, is to go in and uh, form um, polyesters and polyamides of, of, from things that um, naturally occur in, the, in uh, that are common in the natural world. The nice thing about these is that we can still make the same polymers, same types of polymers, but there are microbes in the ground that have already know how to break these things down. Okay, one of the biggest problems with the uh, with a lot of plastics is there just aren't a whole lot of bacteria that know how to that have evolved yet to be able to break this stuff down. But you know we we have all sorts of organisms that can break down lactic acid or glycolic acid or even 3-hydroxybutyric acid, and we can make different um, polyesters or polyamides from that, and the bacteria can down. So very famously at the um, the Olympics in 2000, I think it was, the um, the uh, that was the Summer Olympics that were in Australia, which is ironic because it's winter there. Um, they used um, the cutlery, like the instead of regular plastic forks and plastic knives, they would actually they had it made out of these types of polymers, and they showed where um, a demonstration where they took a, a plastic fork and sh just shoved it in the ground, and then they came. Um, you know, next to a, a regular plastic fork, and they came back a couple of months later and dug up the dirt. The regular plastic fork was was there, and the uh, um, you know the, the one from these more natural polymers, um, but that so it had almost completely broken down. Um, so but that and that was actually just after a couple of months. It was really cool. Um, so about that demonstration of what science can do. So so good luck.